For anyone following AI development day by day, it might feel like we are on this clean, linear or exponential line improving AI. But the truth is a bit different. We have a lot of news and potential breakthroughs that amount to nothing at the end of the day. Until we get an O1 model with chain of thought reasoning that flips the whole industry overnight. The leading AI labs publicize incremental efficiency gains while keeping transformative advances secretive. Because they want to signal momentum but also keep the competitors in the dark when it comes to what actually matters. In this video, we want to take a look at one of those instances where it is obvious in the research community where the next game-changing improvement is, while the major labs are pretending to not care about it on the public front. The impact of this technology could be so profound and happen so fast that society might have no time to respond. Just recently, Google DeepMind released a paper called On the Generalization of Language Models from In-Context Learning and Fine-Tuning, a controlled study. The problem they were trying to address was how fine-tuning a model on specific facts doesn't generalize well enough. Like if there is something as simple as A equals B equals C in the fine-tuning data, the model doesn't recognize that C also equals A. It is unable to make the simplest deductions based off of the facts represented in the data. Therefore, the training doesn't generalize enough, and while the model seems very smart, it ends up making silly and completely illogical mistakes. On the other hand though, when we give the model the same exact data, but inside the prompt itself, which is called in-context learning, it seems to generalize pretty well. Like if you said, hey, A equals B equals C in the prompt, does C equal A, you'll get a firm yes. DeepMind researchers performed a bunch of controlled studies on this exact issue, and they confirmed that yes, that's absolutely true. AI models are able to generalize in context learning much better than fine-tuning. The technical difference is fine-tuning is basically a continuation of the pre-training, where you train the model on a bunch of text and it changes the weights inside the model. But because fine-tuning happens in the later stages, it has an outsized effect. It is more salient to the model, so to speak. But in context learning, is putting the data right inside the prompt. Doesn't change the weights and it will be wiped out every time you start a new session. Now the question is, what do we do? If we keep fine-tuning the model, it keeps learning very specific facts without really generalizing further. And while in context learning is very powerful, we have a limited context window. In this scenario, we either have to choose generalization or longevity. And if we want AGI, we need both of them. DeepMind does offer a solution in this paper called Augmented Fine Tuning that we will get into later in this video. But we brought this experiment up to understand a much larger issue. The problem that if solved might change everything overnight and catch the whole society off guard. Let's take OpenAI 03 for example. It is genius level by human measures and you can have multiple instances of it working 24-7. What keeps this AI from entering any industry right now and just crushing every human human in that field. I've talked about the shortcomings a ton on this channel, so let's hear it from Darkish Patel this time. But the fundamental problem is that LLMs don't get better over time the way a human would. This lack of continual learning is a huge, huge bottleneck. The LLM baseline at many tasks might be higher than the average humans, but there's no way to give a model high-level feedback. You're stuck with the abilities you get out of the box. You can keep messing around with a system prompt, but in practice, this just doesn't produce anything close to the kind of learning and improvement that human employees experience. The reason humans are so useful is not mainly their raw intellect. It's their ability to build up context, to interrogate their own failures, and to pick up small improvements and efficiencies as they practice a task. So, continual learning long-term memory, reliability, and grasping the bigger context of a job or a task. Notice how tightly these problems are intertwined and how a real breakthrough in this area could suddenly shoot the AI capability into another dimension. If the long-term memory or continual learning is solved, you don't start a new chat session with O3. You spawn a new instance of it to life. This instance can keep learning and growing up with you. For example, let's take writing perfect ad copies. If the AI works for just a month, receiving feedback from you, reading the specific guides, and even getting real-time feedback from analytics. It doesn't sleep, it doesn't blink, 
it is constantly adjusting and learning. Would that replace a human copywriter? Now this O3 instance is not an analog brain. Millions of instances working on writing ad copies, learning from millions of human experts, and aggregating analytical data can become unimaginably competent. As we talked about it before, this is the paradigm of continual decentralized learning. Although major AI labs know this bottleneck way better than us, they don't really talk about it. Because one, it is not wise to keep pointing out your own flaws. And two, you don't want to accidentally give away specific solutions to your competitors. If you want to see all the concrete effort that is going into solving this very issue, you can check this paper out. And these are only the open source or publicized ones. A survey of context engineering for large language models. Some using agentic memories where the AI itself manages the memory. But a third-party app acts as a storage, like Autogen or Anthropic MCP. And even outside this tree, some are trying to integrate memory right inside the model itself, like subquadratic architectures and linear attention. And when we see this much effort in the open domain, we can be 100% sure that leading proprietary labs are also dedicating a lot of resources. This is probably the hottest area of research right now, and a breakthrough can change change everything. Now let's see what's DeepMind's new approach here. They introduce augmented fine-tuning. In this method, instead of training the model on the facts in the data, you first give the data to the model and ask it to generate a lot of inferences. It's like telling the AI to basically study the data. Then you take that synthetically generated data and use it to fine-tune the model. This method shows even better generalization over in-context learning. This means that you could imagine a system that interacts with you during the day, learning from the context, then it studies the generated text at night and fine-tunes itself adjusting its actual weights as a form of long-term memory. I'm not really sure what the downside of this approach is and why we haven't seen it widely implemented yet. But the point is a breakthrough on the level of chain of thought reasoning, this time for memory and continual learning, could give AI superpowers overnight. And that's something we should be watching for. Here we go through a rapid fire of some of the most interesting, amazing, and sometimes just bizarre projects in the world of AI. So let's get into it. Notebook LM just introduced video overviews. Take a look at the demo. You can now make video overviews in Notebook LM. The AI host will pull in images and diagrams from your documents and create new visuals to help illustrate points. They're available now in English and coming soon in more languages. Okay, let's dive into the wild world of surrealism. What better way to kick things off than with Salvador Dali's Illumined Pleasures from 1929? And check out this piece from Rene Magritte. By the way, if you are not using Notebook LM, you are missing out massively. It's an amazing tool for learning anything at this point. Sincere unveiled Lume, a robotic lamp designed to help users with household chores. Ideogram dropped character, a new AI model for character consistency. It uses just one reference image to create consistent character images in any style, expression, scene, and lighting.
Finally, if you are interested, Andre Karpathy has announced a 5000 prize for a project helping people not fall behind in the age of AI. It is imperative that humanity not fall while AI ascends. Humanity has to continue to rise, become better alongside, create something that is specifically designed to uplift team human. If you are interested in taking on this challenge, you can find the link to the tweet in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.